All right, hey guys, we are back and we're in Revelation chapter 20. And I believe there's 15, yeah, 15 verses here. So three books left and let's, let's go ahead and read this chapter and see what we got going on. Revelation 20 verse 1 and the Bible says, And I saw an angel come down from, come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now we're going to notice this, you guys. There's a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Oh, you guys know what? Remember how we just read in chapter 19? Actually, let's go back here for a minute. If we go back to chapter 19 at the end, it says, okay, his, okay notice this. It says that, it's talking about the beast and the false prophet. Two of the three of Babylon, right? The beast is the papacy, the false prophet's the USA. Notice this, you guys. And the kings of the earth are mentioned as well. But here it's just the beast and the false prophet. Notice how it says that. Uh, it says, which he deceived them that had, had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. Then it says, these both were cast alive into a, a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That's the second coming. It has to be, okay? Notice how they are both. Both is two. There's no mention of the dragon, okay? Isn't that interesting? Although the kings of the earth are mentioned here in verse 19. Okay, so there's both. So now the very next chapter, let's look at the, look at the second verse. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. You guys, the devil wasn't thrown in the, in the lake of fire yet, Satan and his angels, because they're put in prison on the earth still. So they're alive during those thousand years while all the wicked men uh, are dead, sleeping in the grave. I never noticed that before. That's incredible. And that great chain that is put around his neck that is in his hand, it, it, it's a chain of circumstances. And we're going to see this, that Satan and his angels are bound and there's no humans to tempt because they're all dead or in heaven. Check this out. Verse 3, it says, And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. Then after that, he must be loosed a little season. You see, during them thousand years, he can't deceive the nations, you guys, because the nations the w are either dead or the, uh, the redeemed ones are in heaven. So there's nobody on the earth except Satan and his angels. You guys... For the thousand years, he is chained here by circumstance that he cannot deceive because there's nobody here. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Let's go to verse 4 and it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. So this is during the thousand years, you guys. Judgment's going to be given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, in their minds, or in their or in their hands, their actions. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is in heaven, they're reigning for a thousand years because they're going through the judgment. Because think about it, you guys, there's going to be, if we're there, we're going to be like, oh, I can't believe we made it. And then we're going to look around and we're going to notice that some people or our family or friends or there's going to be people that ain't there. And then we're going to need an explanation why. And the records are all open in judgment. It's given to God's people. That's what we're doing for the thousand years, you guys. That's part of what we're doing. So look at verse five, it says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished this 
is the first resurrection. You guys see what see what's happening? It's incredible how it's explaining this. And then after these thousand years, when judgment of the wicked are done, then they're going to be resurrected. We're going to see that in a minute. So notice these ones that take part in the first resurrection. And some are going to be translated, who's ever alive. So verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, we're going to reign with Christ for a thousand years in heaven. We're going to be up in heaven, on thrones, going through judgment, marriage supper of the Lamb. But notice how it says we're going to be priests of God. Now, other verses tell us that we're going to be kings and priests. But think of something here, you guys. It only mentions priests here because we're not kings until we come back down to the earth and the Son of God, God the Father, and His Son remake the earth for our possession. Then we will be kings. That's how I've put it together anyways. So that's just fascinating to me, man. Uh, and that's the second death. That's That second death, that's the lake of fire. Okay, that's the eternal death. That you're, you're, you're dead, you're gone forever, you cease to exist, and your memory fades, and you're not even remembered. That's the second death. The first death is just a sleep, but the second death, that's the real death. So let's look at verse 7. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now why, why do you think he's loosed, you guys? What happens at the end of that thousand years? We're going to find out. It's the second resurrection. All the wicked come up. So that's why Satan is loosed. Because now there are people back on the earth. And he can tempt them again. And shall go out. And notice what he does. He goes out to deceive the nations. Which are in the four quarters of the earth. His last time to deceive. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So this battle is taking place after the thousand years, you guys. This is the, this is the second resurrection. It's the final. It's when New Jerusalem is on the earth and God's people are inside the city. So that's what this one's talking about. Verse 9 says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth, there we go, and compassed the camp of the saints. They go up and encircle the New Jerusalem, uh, and all God's people are inside the walls. We're looking out, and we can see everybody that's ever lived, all the wicked, are going to encircle and try to take the city. Satan's deceiving them, you know, to get the tree of life, to get healed, to live forever. I can, and he thinks his numbers, his strength in numbers can win. But see, it's not strength in numbers. It's strength in one, God the Father, and His only Son. That's the strength. <laughs> There's two divine beings in the universe. The Father and His Son. <laughs> wow. That's incredible, you guys. So notice, they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints, about, and notice what happens. And the beloved city... And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You guys see? Satan and his angels and all the wicked humans of all time. You guys are all going to be devoured in this fire. It's an eternal death. The fire is eternal. But what it burns is not eternal. It burns you up, you die, you're gone forever so verse 10 says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire before it was just a lake of fire at the second coming but it's the lake of fire here at the second death and brimstone notice this where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever 
That just means they're going to be tormented with the fire un until they're gone. You know, they're not going to continue to live however long it takes. Satan will probably burn the longest, I'm sure. So, but if you look here, you guys notice what it says there? It says that the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Oh, that's kind of interesting because we noticed the beast and the false prophet in chapter 19 were both put in a lake of fire and the dragon wasn't mentioned. I have to study that one out more because I think there might be something there that I'm missing. Yeah, I'm going to look at that more. Let's look at 11. It says, And I saw a great white throne. This is the white throne judgment, you guys. This is where the wicked are all shown. Uh, the, the sky is going to light up like a, like a panoramic movie theater, and everybody is going to see their life, all the, all the chances that God was trying to win them to, to himself through his son, but they just wouldn't do it. So everybody's going to agree that 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 they didn't want it, and they're gonna they're gonna agree that they should all be all be killed. They're all gonna bow their knees, and they're gonna agree that God is just. And yeah, it's incredible. So the great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Wow. I don't want to be in that group, man. That's, wow. Verse 12 says, And I saw the dead. Now, remember when, when God writes, you guys, I don't know the exact structure. I know there's chiasms a little bit. I haven't really studied a lot of it. But a lot of times God will make a statement. And then like a like the greatest teacher of all time, he'll make a statement. And then later on, he will repeat and expand. He will re review what he already said, repeat. He'll expand, give more detail. And then we, we compare other verses in the Bible that talking about the same things. And that's where the Bible will expound to us the details and all the truth that we need. Okay, so the dead, small and great, stand before God. Wow, so the dead, you guys, this is the second resurrection right here. They stand before God, and notice this, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. So you got the book of life opened. They're going to see that their names are not in there. But then there's other books that are opened. Some of the other books that, that I know of are like the book of remembrance, the book of iniquity, like all the sins that, that we commit, every single one, the book of... Uh, I'm not sure what else there is, but but there are multiple books here. Uh, even the even the secrets, God, is, through His Spirit, you guys, He searches out even the secrets in our heart, and they are written down. So we we are laid wide open, naked before God. Nothing can be hidden from Him. So we got to remember this. We got to confess it all, you guys. Every sin, man. So let's see what it says. The books were open, another book was open, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So everybody is recorded or judged according to their works. So whatever they worked for, that's what they get. Now God's people have are in his son or in Christ and and the spirit. The Spirit of God is in God's people. It's in their heart. And then it then what it, then it gives you a new mind. This is how a person is born again. So let's look at 13. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. This is talking about the resurrection of the second one. The sea gave up all the dead which were in it. And notice this, And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Hell just means the grave, you guys. So death and the grave delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Now, here's the best part, you guys. 
that this is going to show you very simply here that people do not burn forever and ever in all eternity in torment. The second death is eternal and people die and are gone forever, including Satan and his angels. Notice this, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That's the eternal death. Okay? Now, I love this because death itself and the grave, because that's what hell is. Death and the grave were cast into the lake of fire. So death itself and the grave, the, the resting place. You guys, both those things, are they are destroyed forever. It's the second death. And notice what else. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And we know the lake of fire just told us that's second death. So anybody that's not in the book is going to have to go through second death and they're going to, it's the final death. There's no coming back from it. You're, you're just, you're gone forever. So that's a common misconception that a lot of people have because they think that, that our souls are somehow separate from us, you know? But what they don't realize is that in the beginning when, when God breathed life into Adam with the spirit, with the breath of life, man became a living soul. He was not given a soul. He did become a soul. So that's just important to remember the state of the dead. So, okay, guys, that's done with that one. That was a pretty quick one. We got two chapters left, and I will be, I'll be back soon. So let's continue to, to read and to, uh, to study these things. So, all right. Well, praise God. Amen. God bless you guys, and I'll see you next video.